So the question becomes, what are we gonna do with all these ducks? Why do I have so many ducks? My friend Eli, uh, who is an Amish gentleman that I know, he calls Muscovies swamp turkeys, and that's pretty accurate. If you haven't noticed, I've got quite a few. Uh, in the short term, meat, sustainability, Muscovies are an incredibly vital part of our mission to become more sustainable as far as our own meat is concerned. They're great foragers, they're low maintenance, they're wonderful at hatching out and raising their own young with little to no human intervention. Muscovies are incredible at just going about their business and taking care of themselves. Unlike a lot of other livestock, uh, they don't need anything from us. They really don't need grain if you live in a warm climate and you have enough you know, land for them to forage at all. But here we're in a colder climate and I also wanna make sure that our birds don't take off on us. So they are fed non-GMO grain, but that helps as far as you know, the meat is concerned too. We want our birds to grow out well. They're not like meat chickens. I don't just sit there and dump grain out for them. They get fed at this point once a day and then they forage the rest of the day. When it's winter and there's no forage for them, then yes, we will obviously grain them appropriately because they still need to eat and they still need to stay warm. They need calories. Um, but in the summertime, especially, and in the springtime, their feed input requirements from us are none because they don't need grain. However, like I said, I wanna keep them around. I don't want my birds to take off. I don't want them to think the grass is greener somewhere else. So we will always feed at least a little bit of grain. Where's the sweet kitty? There's one. My baby Arch. Arch. I've talked about the cats before, but if you're new to the channel or you didn't, catch it previously when we bought our property last year we inherited two barn cats whoa arch sorry i just opened that straw bale this morning honey. archie's basically a real life stuffed animal she's the softest she just loves me she's so sweet so muscovies are from south and central america and it's pretty remarkable you know we live here like i said in west michigan uh, they do so well in the cold. They are the most adaptable animal. Uh, they will sit out, I mean, in anything but a blizzard and just sit outside, even though they have the option of going into a warm enclosed space with straw and all that. They just like to be outside and they're just so incredibly hardy. They're large ducks. They're much larger than like a, you know, a khaki Campbell or a runner duck or something like that. So I, I think they do better at staying warm overall. Uh, but they're just, they're so tough. I so mean, we'll call a, any other duck other than a Muscovy, we'll call a horse. And then we have Muscovies, which are donkeys. And then they can crossbreed, but any offspring like a donkey and a horse is going to be sterile. It's going to be a mule. So they're not, they're not really ducks. Um, they have a lot of characteristics of turkeys. They like to roost. Um, they're like a really, really lean red meat. They don't have hardly any fat on them. So I learned from trial and error when you butcher Muscovies and you go to cook them, you can't have the expectation that you're roasting a Peking duck in the oven because they don't have the same fat. They don't develop that fat. They're super lean. And that in part, of course, comes from their diet and how active they are. It's funny because now they're all coming over here because I'm sitting and they're wondering what I'm doing. And Muscovies are quiet ducks. They do not quack. Um, you can kind of hear. So the hens make that sound. These are all females. And then the drake is making this hissing sound. And that is a way to sex them other than kind of obvious. Looking at this red on their face, their carnicles, um, the drakes get these really big, you know, kind of ugly red blobs on their face and the hens and the hens get very small ones now the hen behind him this one right here she is fully mature hers aren't going to grow anymore 
and that's what hers look like. Some hens could get bigger ones. These ones are young, but you can see, again, this is that Drake's sister, and she's got bigger carnicles than this hen here. And then these two that are young have smaller ones too, and theirs may grow a little bit more. Our, our previous Drake Malfoy that we got rid of, uh, he had a gypsy mask, which is like black around the carnicles and that's just an inherited trait i believe it's a recessive gene and so here's our muscovy drake merlin who is a blue barred drake i don't know i guess technically he might be considered pied with the amount of white on him and then that's actually his sister and they came from a farm that's a road over from us that also has some muscovies and i traded with them uh, a couple of hens I had for some ducklings this spring. Oh, here's our two prettier juveniles. I mentioned previously in another video I got from a fellow Muscovy breeder in Greenville that I know. So the champagne lighter, kind of whiter, solid bird is a buff drake who will be our big boy drake next year i'm very excited to see how he's going to change our breeding program as far as colors are concerned wow. and... hey duck. here is my best mama this year morticia this girl right here and these are her babies these all black ones that are all the same size uh these ones over here are from a different clutch from another hen and so that's a black bard, that kind of uh, ripple looking coloration or pattern, I should say, is called barring. Just like Merlin is a blue barred drake. Uh, you can see it somewhat in his feathers, but actually barring is something that molts out. So as he gets older and molts more and more, they kind of lose it and they become more solid color. There's a pattern gene in Muscovy is called ripple. I don't have any ripples currently though. Um, my friend I mentioned who's in Greenville who breeds Muscovies has some ripple uh, birds so I will probably be adding ripple genetics next year from her. Um, ripple does not fade out the way a barring will molt out I believe. And these solid colored birds this one here and then like this black and white one here that's part of that clutch with the barred baby that's there. So I've got two clutches right now. These ones being the youngest and Morticia had 11. One disappeared, which was bound to happen. So she has 10 and those will all go in the freezer. I'm not keeping any of them. If one of the bards, there's three black bards uh, that look similar to that bird. There's three total. I think two are actually hens. And if they are, I'm gonna keep them both at least through next year for breeding purposes. Uh, the drake will definitely get butchered. So I've got 10 young babies, uh, I think nine of the black barred group ducklings, these ones here. And then I've got, I don't know if you can tell, but this bird is beautiful that you can see the green coming in and see the beautiful barring pattern on the feathers here with this particular bird. Again, I think it's a drake, so it's gonna wind up in the freezer, but it is a beautiful bird nonetheless. Let's see if I can get it to stand up. I can probably tell you. Oh yeah, that's a drake. Um, the feet are extremely large, so it's a dead giveaway that that's a drake. And at some point that becomes very obvious. Let's see if we walk over to this one, if we can tell. I think this one's a hen. Hmm. Definitely helps if you can see them next to each other, but just in looking, yeah, this one's a female. So this is a female and then this one, her brother, is a male. I don't know if you can tell just by looking at them, but the size difference right now is pretty substantial. Uh, the drakes just, they grow faster, they get bigger. And so that one's definitely a drake. They just kind of walk differently too. And the females are just more demure, I would say. And then this, oh, here's the other bard. So this is the other black bard. And that one is a female as well, I believe. So these two are girls. And then, oh, is that one a drake? No, I think these are both females. So I think these both are females. And then we have the drake over here. So the drake will go in the freezer. And there's my buff drake, who again will be a next year main breeding boy for me. And uh, you can see, oh, this is the one that has the gypsy mask that I mentioned. Uh, you can see the black on the bill and that's the gypsy mask. 
So this is our deck house. I'll link the video. We uh, built this out of an old corn crib and it's it's served its purpose as well. It has a roost in there, but there, we're definitely gonna have to totally redo it next year. I actually wanna build an enclosed pen around here. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in a later video about setting up breeding for Muscovies, what kind of requirements there are as far as their housing and nest boxes and things like that to keep them happy. They are not like chickens when it comes to the way that they nest. <laughs> Archie's in the duck house drinking water. Smart, Arch. Oh, cute. I just caught the boys there. What are you boys wrestling? What are you doing, fighting? Whoa, get him, Tempe. You're not going to take no lip from him, are you? Another long-term goal, as I mentioned, is breeding for color. Muscovies are like Pokemon. I want to collect all of them. There's so many cool, rare colors and patterns, and that's something that I'd really like to get into is just expanding and phasing out all of my kind of common colored birds. Black is the most common. It's the wild type color. Pretty much any Muscovy you see in the wild is going to be black or black pied, and so that is a dominant gene, and it's something that I want to phase out. So eventually I won't have any more blackbirds and hopefully I won't be hatching any more blackbirds. The drake that I got rid of this year was a black drake. And so every duckling that's been born here, except for the one blue female that I showed you earlier um, with the white head, uh, every single duckling besides her has been black or black pied or black barred, some variation of black because he was a black drake. In Muscovies, the drake is the one who determines the color of the offspring. Sure, the color of the female factors in genetically, of course, but the drake is the one who is dominant over the female's color. So if you have a black drake, the likelihood of getting offspring that aren't black, regardless of whether I breed him to a black hen or a lilac hen or a lavender hen or a blue hen those or a chocolate hen, the offspring are going to be black pretty much. Your, your chances are very, very small of getting anything else. And the only other colors you get are going to be super limited. There is a uh, Muscovy breeder in the U.S. Her name is Allison Patry. And uh, Allison, if you happen to see this video, I hope I said your last name right. But her name is Allison. And you can check out her website, Al's Quackery. She does sell ducks. Uh, she sells Muscovies as ducklings and also sometimes some juvenile. Or I think sometimes adult birds. That might be local pickup only. Anyways. Allison, Al's Quackery has a really cool Muscovy breeding chart that will show you, depending on color drake, crossover, what color hen, what the color options are. So she is the number one resource as far as Muscovy genetics that I'm aware of. And she's done a lot of breeding and a lot of test breeding. And she's learned a lot as far as the way Muscovy genetics work. So that's something that um, in the future, as I look at my breeding goals for my flock, I can pull up that chart and um, I can talk about that in another video if you guys are actually interested in learning more about Muscovy genetics. Um, I would be happy to do a video on that. Let me know below if that's something you'd like to see. Um, I can use her chart to determine, you know, what color animals I want to keep as far as, uh, you know, focusing on the colors that I'm trying to breed for. I hope that this uh, video was informative and I hope you enjoyed seeing my beautiful little ducklings. Uh, they're cute. You know, it's funny when people come over, especially kids, they're like, hey, can we pet the ducklings? Oh, they're so cute. Can we pet them? And I always feel bad, but um, the answer is usually no or at your own risk or good luck because the reality is these are wild birds that... I mean, sure, they're somewhat domesticated, but they are wild in their temperament and they don't want anything to do with humans. They haven't been handled. As I said, I like Muscovies because they raise their own young. I'm not pulling the ducklings and brooding them and handling them and then putting them back with their moms. That would kind of defeat the purpose of having this really self-sustainable flock for me, for my goals, for my purposes. So as cute as the ducklings are, we don't ever pick them up. We don't ever handle them. Uh, maybe once in a blue moon, if somebody comes over and my husband trying to seize an opportunity, he might go snag a duckling and uh, let the kids pet it. But the moms really don't like that. And they're very, very, very protective of their young. 
which is awesome. We want super protective Muscovy moms. We want to have, uh, you know, successful clutches hatched and raised without, again, human intervention. So as good as the ducklings are, we don't, uh, we don't handle them. So we just admire them and their cute little ducky selves from afar. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to learn more about raising Muscovy ducks, please leave me a comment down below. What kind of content would you like to see? Is there something in particular you'd like to learn about Muscovies? I would love to hear from you. It means a lot to connect with other like-minded people and also just in general as a content creator, as someone with an aspiring, you know, YouTube channel. I'd really love to connect with you all more on a personal level. So keep the comments coming. Uh, please give my videos a thumbs up if you like them. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. You know, I, I just, I'm excited to be a part of this community and I thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. What do we plan on doing with our... Archie, come here. <laughs>